Um, adolescents are disproportionately disadvantaged across the cascade, right from diagnosis through linkage to care, treatment, and um, retention in care. So if we discuss testing first, there are several specific barriers um, for accessing testing t in adolescents. So there are provider-specific barriers as well as client-related barriers. The, the provider uh, uh, barriers would be the most important one would be ethical legal uh, constraints. There's a requirement to, to get consent from guardians to be able to access HIV testing. And in the context um, if, of where most adolescents live globally, which is in sub-Saharan Africa, consent um, is required in many, uh, in many countries up to the age of 16 or even 18. And um, where there is fragile guardianship or changing guardianship, accessing consent can be uh, a considerable barrier. Also, the, there is really a very low perception of risk of HIV in adolescents, particularly a HIV that's been acquired through m mother to child transmission, where HIV may have been acquired horizontally or through sexual transmission. Clearly, the issue of consensual and non-consensual intercourse comes, sexual intercourse comes in, which uh, clearly uh, many healthcare providers would find very difficult to address, and that can potentially put them off offering testing in, in, in um, adolescents. Also, it, when one considers the, the actual um, resource uh, competition and the priorities, the proportional number of adolescents with HIV is far smaller than that of adults. So when there are cost constraints, adolescents are really often not the priority. Um, the language to discuss HIV is difficult for both caregivers and uh, for, um, uh, for uh, uh, providers, which can, which can make it very difficult to offer testing. And then one, one thinks of the barriers that come through for adolescents to, test, uh, to access testing from um, clients. Um, essentially, guardians are, have a lot of competing priorities in terms of other children, income, um, schooling, etc. Uh, HIV testing their children is often not the first priority. There's a misplaced uh, desire to protect their children from knowing their HIV status. And also, um, uh, HIV uh, testing the adolescents can often result in inadvertent disclosure of the family's HIV status, particularly the, the mother's HIV status, and the accompanying guilt and difficulties in dealing with that in the family can be a real barrier to accessing testing. These um, particular barriers are very specific to, to this age group. There are specific treatment concerns um, that one needs to address in adolescents. The biggest issue is um, the higher, disproportionately higher rates of virological failure. And there are several reasons for this. Uh, what the one big reason is uh, poorer adherence. We know in many other chronic diseases that adher um, adherence tends to drop during adolescence. And HIV is um, unfortunately no exception. So um, the risk of virological failure is thus higher. The other issues that might result in um, uh, higher virological failure rates are that um, adolescents are on, have been on treatment for, in many cases, for a very long time, either from early uh, likely from early childhood, and so there's more time for failure to accrue. Um, in addition, um, there is some concern that dose changes by weight don't happen as optimally as they should, and there may have been periods when children are underdosed, resulting in virological failure. So that is a real concern um, in adolescents. The um, other treatment issues that we need to be thinking about are the toxicity um, of antiretroviral therapy. Um, children, um, adolescents have started antiretroviral therapy often in childhood at a time when their physiological systems are not mature. And they are taking antiretroviral therapy for much longer periods than adults do. And we don't really completely understand the long-term effects that antiretroviral therapy will have in this age group. Uh, finally, um, what I'd like to highlight uh, in terms of treatment issues is the additional complications that HIV brings over and above those of opportunistic infection. So long-standing HIV in adolescents is associated with many chronic complications, in fact, multi-system complications, including chronic lung disease, cardiac disease, neurocognitive complications, chronic skin disease, and, and skin disease. Um, we 
often focus our priorities on providing antiretroviral therapy, but have paid to date relatively little attention to addressing these chronic complications. Over and above delivering antiretroviral therapy for treatment of HIV infection, there are certain care issues, uh, additional care issues that one needs to take into account. So I already alluded to adherence being a major issue in adolescence, but, uh, there, are, but there are other issues such as disclosure. Disclosure is often delayed, and if it is done, it's often done suboptimally uh, as an abrupt one-point event. And with caregivers, uh, caregivers or uh, healthcare providers not um, being able to adequately address the issues that follow a disclosure of uh, HIV diagnosis to an adolescent. The, um, this is a phase when adolescents are undergoing phys physical change and are approaching puberty and sexual debut, and, men and the sexual health needs of adolescents are very often not addressed in the context of HIV care services. Um, the, uh, the other huge issue that uh, is very often neglected is mental health. There's a very high burden of mental health um, conditions in adolescents. They often arise in adolescents and clearly are multifactorial in the context of HIV infection, um, including dealing with the diagnosis, the stigma that they face, the emotional consequence of living with a life-threatening condition, the bereavement, as well as, um, um, as, well as uh, you know, adolescents itself. Um, as a result of that, you know, the mental health burden can have uh, a huge impact on morbidity. Um, the, on, on top of that, there are all the socio, social and psychological aspects of addressing HIV. Um, many, many of the adolescents living with HIV are orphans, have undergone bereavement, loss of parents or loss of siblings, and that has a very big impact on their ability to um, address HIV infection.